Well, hello, my friends. My name is Garrett J. White, founder of Wake Up Warrior and host here of Wake Up Warrior TV. This is the weekly wake up, and it's episode number 10. Number 10. Number 10. We've come a long way. We've come a long way. It's not our first TV show. It's not our first time being here online. If you haven't checked us out before, well, we are found at wakeupwarrior.com. And if this is your first experience here with Wake Up TV, which a lot of you, week to week, we're getting more and more and more who are following the movement, men from around the globe who are participating in this simple conversation, which is answering this question right here. The question my wife asked me a number of years ago, back in 2007, as shit went sideways for me in my life, and asked me simply this, are you gonna be the man? Can you be the man? And I was left with this search and this desire to try to find out what that actually meant. A financial life imploded. My marriage was imploding. I was heading towards a divorce number two. My addictions had taken over my life and literally on a day-to-day -day basis, it was just everything I had to try to survive. From that place, I began to ask some better questions, one of which was trying to answer this one right here. And every single week here on the show, we're going to do our best to answer this question, what it means to be a modern man today, specifically what it means to be a modern married man in the world of business or being an entrepreneur working for somebody else. This be the man concept, though, we had to do a little history. And if you missed episode number four, I'd encourage you to go back to episode number four, where you can learn more about the systematic sedation of men. And literally, however, the last 120 years, men have been slowly and subtly castrated literally left in a place of hopelessness, cast down from the crowns and the thrones that they ran as kings to become peasants in the street, doing nothing more than groveling for sex, groveling for attention, groveling for money, groveling and hoping that they could actually figure this game out of being the man. But don't worry, it wasn't your fault and it wasn't mine. We were fucking born into this game long before we came out of the vaginal canal. We had no control over it, but we do have control of what we do from here. This message from this sedation loop told us the following. It said, your job in life is to get the money. Your second job is to shut the fuck up because your feelings don't matter. Your third is that we don't really need you. Because guess what? As women, women, the entire feminist movement began to teach what? Not the power of women. It began to teach that we're so powerful as women, we don't need you anymore as men. And all of a sudden, the sameness quality came into place. Not the equality of being a man and a woman, but the sameness. This idea that men and women are the same. This is bullshit. A penis is a penis, and a vagina is a vagina. I don't give a shit how you look at it. A man is a man, and as a woman is a woman. The end. And for a lot of us, we were raised up in a world very confusing today where we're being told, be the fucking man, go get us some money, ignore your feelings because we don't give a shit about those, you pussy. And the third piece we're being told is, guess what, at the end of the day, we don't actually need you because we already got this shit figured out, the ladies say. Fourth piece, you're all alone. And this is the worst piece. And that's why we put on this show. That's why we do it every single week. It's one of our efforts and our attempts to reach out to you, men like you watching here, and particularly women who may be watching who are married to men or connected to men who know they need this message, which is you're not alone. The Wake Up Warrior movement didn't exist when I struggled. It didn't exist when I tried to find these answers. It didn't exist when my wife was walking out the door. It didn't exist when I found myself drunk on the floor night after night after night, just trying to fucking sedate myself with enough vodka so I didn't have to worry about what the fuck I was going to have to do tomorrow. Because waking up tomorrow was just as shitty as being alive today. Inside of this place, we birthed in our society a problem. The problem exists here. We have a massive quantity of what I call she-men now. She-men and men-she's. She-men and men-she's. Women who have risen up in their masculinity, not a problem. But they rose up because men didn't show the fuck up. So women have become confused just as much as men. Women now living in this game, am I a man or am I a woman? Do I channel my masculine energy or my feminine? How do I deal with this conversation? Because most of the men around me show up as men she's. Yeah, they might have a cock and balls, but inside of that game, they ultimately fall and they submit to this game of saying, please, ladies, why don't you just be the man? Because I got no fucking plan. And so we said, listen, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to restore it. It's not about masculine energy or feminine energy. It's not about putting women down. It's about building women up. It's not about putting men down in order to build women up. It's about building people up. But here at Warrior, we focus on empowering the men. Because there's a lot of fucking places where women can go to to get power, to be real, and to have conversations. We built a network of men. 
and a doctrine that guided men since 2012, doctrine that I uncovered inside my own pain back in 2008 and 9. And so with that being said, we introduce this idea of one dimensionality. The most men have been raised to believe that life itself is one dimensional in necessity. If I just live inside of one domain, I get paid, well then hopefully I'll get laid. And as long as those two things happen, well I guess my game has been played. We're here to say, fuck you, tradition. That's not what we stand for. It's not what I fucking stand for. I wake up every single day with a commitment to be a four-dimensional man. And this is what it means to live the warrior's way. Teaching men how to reclaim what it is to be a man. Teaching men to rise up in a place and say, listen, being a four-dimensional man requires me to master four core domains. We call the core four body, being, balance, and business. And in today's show, we're going to take this a little bit deeper. We're going to go a little bit further. But before we do that, I have to remind you about what brings this show to pass. And it's ultimately an amazing ticket into a brotherhood, a global brotherhood of over 17 different countries of men from all over the globe who have come together unified inside an online network, who travel to Laguna Beach, California, participate in very intense, immersive experiences known as Warrior Week, but more importantly since last fall, have been joining us every single month, 100 men at a time, into a process uniquely accessed through what we call Warrior Book. So if you're unfamiliar with this, warriorbook.com is where I want you to go. And here's a little clip before we begin the show. To me, what, what the Warrior Book is, it's, it's, it's a masterstroke. It's a work of art. It's, it's, a, it's a gift of life, really. It's a, it's a gift for you to be able to create the life that you want in full control, not reliant on anybody else, but reliant on the only person that matters, and that's you. So for anybody who's thinking about joining Warrior, I would say, what the hell are you waiting for? This is your opportunity to create your ideal life. This is an opportunity to seriously send your life off in a whole new trajectory. So if you're somebody who knows there's more out there for you, who knows that you're here to make a difference, And the science that sits inside of this book is going to significantly enhance your chances of doing just that. Spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars joining every fucking business group, every men's group, trying to find something this organized, this functional, with guys this quality we're going to open up and share with this level of teaching and depth in an organized format that fucking anybody could follow. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the show, my friends. And uh, let's do a little, little roll call. A little roll call. You remember that in school? I, my last name is White with the W, right? So that means I was always the last kid to ever get my name called during class. I don't know why they did this. It was like abusive. They put the W's to the end, so they, I always had to be last. But I guess in a good book, they say the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So here we are. Fuck them, I guess, all those A letter A last name people. Let's do a little roll call on this. Todd Gaster, good morning. If you were live on the show, let me know you're here. We got Fabian Rubal. What's up, man? Good morning. Welcome to the show. Scott McLeish. What's going on, buddy? Good morning. Danny Giacobi. Giacobi. I think that's it. Welcome to the show. Darren Van Scoy. Welcome to the show. Joshua Wood. First time catching this live. Well, welcome to the show live, my friend. Uh, or SK Man, who just joined us in Warrior Book here just the last couple weeks, last week, I believe. Welcome, my friend. Tony Pope Jr., morning, afternoon, brothers. Time to soak up some knowledge. Katie Yule, one of the queens of one of the men who you may have seen inside of our Warrior documentary series, came into Warrior as a family here two years ago. Amazing changes. David Evans, good evening from the UK. What's up, bro? Welcome to the show. Robert Argyle, welcome. Big boom to you, too. Gary Tutsi, good morning, my friend. How are you? Josh Wood, you and me both, brother. Welcome. Valeria Simonoko, good stuff. Love your videos. Good, man. Welcome to today's show. We got a lot of great shit to cover today. Shane Kyle Cut, checking in once again from Fayette, Arkansas. Shane, did you move to Arkansas? You always live in Arkansas? I didn't know you always lived there. Mark Wilson, coach. What's up, buddy? Dale Russell, good morning. John Broda, good afternoon. Greg Lasso, committed to myself to jump in 600. 
Good. 600's coming in three weeks. 600's on the 28th. Finlay, we got on the 28th is when the Warrior Book uh, 600 is available. I believe it's April 3rd. Is it April 3rd? All right, well, whatever the fuck the date is, it's coming up sometime in the end of March, first part of uh, April. Ed Wheat, good morning. Chad Collier, good morning. Brooks White, I like it. Another last name, White. You and me both, buddy, at the end of the line during elementary school. Brian Avitable, good morning. Josh Fredwick, thank you for helping me ask, my, ask new questions, for helping me hold myself accountable at a new level, letting me know we're not alone. Kevin Thompson, Kevin Thompson, one of my friends, probably the most powerful networker I've ever met in my life. Um, the guy is solid as shit. Kevin, welcome to the show today. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to put this down and we're going to get after it. I'll come back to our interactions during some of our Q&A sections here uh, during the show. Um, I'll leave that there so that I know where we're at. So one of, the, one of the questions that I have rarely spent any time on here on this show comes down to this idea of purpose. Now, what many people don't know is I spent three years, it was 2008, 2009, and 2010, and the only conversation I was interested in when I woke up on a day-to-day basis wasn't marketing and it wasn't money. Now, that was clearly evident in my bank accounts. It was also clearly evident in how frustrated and pissed off my wife was 24-7 because I couldn't fucking pay the bills. Now, I'm not advocating here or really encouraging you to go spend three years studying purpose while not getting paid. I think there's a way to do both, and I hope to cover that today in a clear way for you to let you see the power behind purpose and the purpose behind power and how these two interconnect. So there I was for three years. Every single day, I would listen to audio programs from guys like Dr. Wayne Dyer, Eckhart Tolle, Byron Katie, Debbie Ford. Oh, shit, you name them, I listened to them. I went to workshops and meditation retreats, studied with the Buddhists, studied with the Hindus. Literally, tried on both of those belief systems religiously, like religiously, for a year each. I was raised Christian, raised Catholic and Mormon, left my faith at that time because it just wasn't fitting into what I could find in purpose in myself. There was a voice in me, not that was saying where you at is wrong, but just where you are, the labels that you're playing on will not allow you to see some things I need you to see. And so one of the things that happened between 2008 and 2011 was this trust in a voice inside of me. Now, I don't know where you're at in life. I don't know what it is that your life has given you. Maybe shit's working really well for you. Maybe this whole four-dimensional man, body being balanced in business, maybe this has actually worked out really well for you and you're doing great. And if you are, congratulations. And maybe you're somebody stuck like I was where you're like, shit, man, I can't even pay the bills or maybe I'm struggling to even find sense of purpose because here's the thing, it's hard for people who don't make money to understand. There are just as many problems at the top of the game with money as there is at the bottom of the game when you don't have any. I know just as many men who have produced empires financially who are literally sitting in such boredom and chaos that the, the actions they're taking on a daily basis are actually burning their shit to the ground. No differently than the man who has nothing, who continues to have nothing and not produce either. And I had a question asked to me yesterday in the live stream, which was, Garrett, well, what is it that drives you to do all of this? All this passion and this fire and this, this desire that you demonstrate to keep producing and growing, committing. How did you take your marriage from divorce's door? My wife and I were fucking done. We were done. She was like, you're an asshole. I was like, you're a bitch. We're like, listen, we're typing out. This did not work out. And I'm like, fuck, I'm going to be the two-time divorce guy. I'm going to be the two-time divorce guy with two beautiful daughters and a son with two different women. Then I'm going to be the single guy hitting it up on Tinder and Bumble. It's like, listen, man, all my single dudes out there are up on that shit. Good for you. I'm proud of you. But me, that just wasn't something I wanted to sign up for. I knew there had to be a better way. And so during those three years, I literally stopped wearing shoes. I grew my hair out. I wore mala beads. Why the fuck you need to do any of that? I don't know. I just decided I'd try it on. And I became a guy who was committed to finding out the why. The first question I started with is, who am I? And we covered that in episode number nine, right? But here in episode 10, though, I'm going to talk about a different question, which was a question that was really stirring in my mind after I recognized that who I am simply is a story of what I choose myself to be. That ultimately, my belief system about who I am is literally created, self-generated. Who you believe you are today is a self-generated story. I don't think you ever find out who you actually are because every moment that you grow, you continue to find out that you're more by far than what you thought you were before. And so it was no different there. But here was the second question that rose up for me. What is the purpose of my life? Now, religiously, in Catholicism and Mormonism, I was taught that my life had purpose. 
I also, as I expanded that out and I had tested on other Christian faiths and then ultimately walked away from the Christian faith for a number of years and began to study in Buddhism and Hinduism. I began to study in Taoism and then I just went to even to almost the sideline of kind of Scientology style. Now, I wasn't a Scientologist, but I started studying literally just science and astronomy and trying to figure out like what the fuck is the purpose of my life? Now, the nice thing about religion is people have a lot of answers. They have a lot of answers and they tell you this is what it is. And I could really consider the possibility of all those things, but inside there was a voice in me that was said, keep searching, look for something more, something different. Not because I couldn't get the answers in those locations of all these different denominations of Christianity, nor inside of Buddhism and Hinduism, and nor inside of astrology or inside of Scientology. It's not that I couldn't find it over there. I was hunting and searching but the thing I was hunting and searching for were answers. And all of these things create opportunities for us. They create opportunities for us to ask better questions. And the question I went to number two was what is the purpose of my life? And so I started to look, I started to ask, I started to consider what is the purpose of my life? How does my life operate? And I realized that I was stuck between this little continuum right here. The continuum of perfection and progression. Perfection and progression. Let's talk about the first one. So I had a whole lot of belief systems that were given to me from the time I was born that the purpose of my life is to become perfect as Jesus is perfect, to become perfect as God is perfect, that my life and its purpose here is to become perfect. And that I would search out salvation, and inside of that salvation I would find my liberation, and inside of that I would find somehow this perfection. And so I tried that on for 15 years. I hustled and grinded every single day with this fucking checklist of trying to hit it perfect, living the perfection way. Here's what you have to do in order to get back to the good place. I'm going to do this. 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 Now, I'm a little bit of a psychotic fool, which means when I try on something new, I actually go all the way in. So when I tried on Buddhism, I didn't like kind of go in. I literally denounced everything else in my life, and I went all in on Buddhism. When I went all in on Hinduism, I was at the temple every week. When I went all in with these considerations, I went all in. So when I was Catholic, Mormon, I was all in. When I was born again Christian, I was all in. Like, I was all in, just like I'm all in with you today. And it's why my life grows so fast, because I burn my ships and I try on things. And I look for what will last. And then inside of this place, I realized that no matter how hard I tried, no matter what I tried to do, I was left with the following reality. And that was that I was never going to be perfect. To some of you watching, that might be really simple to understand. For a guy who was raised with a series of checklists, that this is the plan. This was really, really hard for me to understand. And most of my days were spent in self-crucifixion, plagued with guilt and shame about all the shit I wasn't doing, about the perfection that I could never accomplish. Perfection is like a horizon. I live here in Laguna Beach, California. Our office is in Dana Point, California. And I can tell you right now the beauty about the ocean is no matter how much I paddle out in my kayaks, no matter how much I paddle out my stand-up paddle boards or wave runners or boats, there is a point at the horizon. I could see it from here, but once I arrive to that place, it no longer appears. The horizon is gone. It's literally done, and it leaves me in a place of saying, okay, well, where did the horizon go? Well, it moved, it moved, and now the show was over there. And no matter how much I traveled, no matter how hard I went, that horizon would continue to go. And so then one day I considered something. There was a phrase, a simple phrase a friend of mine asked me. He said, Garrett, I'm going to have you consider the possibility. You'll hear me say it all the time now because it's one of the most powerful phrases I've ever heard of to allow a person an op opportunity to see something from a different place. See, I also knew something being raised Christian, which was this. Was it inside the Bible? It said, the following said, that by their fruit you shall know them. And I was like, okay, I can deal with this. By their results, you can know if the life they're living is working. And I stopped listening to what people were saying. And I knew in my life that no matter how much I tried to pretend like my shit was perfect, the reality was my life was not perfect. The reality was I had a lot of questions. The reality was I had a lot of confusion. The reality was I had a lot of guilt, a lot of shame that was completely constructing my game. And inside of that place of perfection, I simply asked the following, my friend asked me this, what if, what if the purpose of your life wasn't perfection? What if it was progression? <sighs> and he and I began to have some conversations and I went with that question and I started to study and ponder on that and meditate on that 
possibility during 2008, 9, and 10. Again, wasn't focused on anything else, but trying to figure out how can I rebuild a life after almost a decade as a banker? How can I build a life that fucking matters? And I knew I had to answer this question because what the purpose of your life is and mine every single day, it's what drives us to find the power inside of us and outside of us. Nothing inside of you and I will ever be driven by anything more than what we believe is the purpose upon the door that we're knocking. And so I started asking, well, what if the purpose of my life was progression? What if the purpose of my life was to expand? What if the purpose of my life was to simply be more today than I was yesterday? What if the purpose of my life was not to be perfect, but the perfection was the understanding that the purpose of my life was progression? And that the universe and source was not looking for me to get it right, but was looking for me to be unafraid of the night and to leap into the voids of who I could be and ultimately take a stand in that new possibility. There was one simple phrase that was used a number of years ago with me and a man said to me, he said, the greatest hell inside my life will be meeting the man when I die. I could have been had I been willing to go all in. There are a lot of you who sit trapped inside of stories, inside of perfection plans that watch this show, that follow this movement. I realize I'm very threatening. I realize that a lot of what I say is hard to hear. I'm not asking you to follow me. I'm not some fucking guru. This is not a cult. I am not telling you to believe me. I'm introducing principles here. Principles of possibility. Principles that might help you see. This is why we ultimately built the Warrior Book. We created this, this brotherhood of Wake Up Warrior empowered by the Warrior Book to give a man a chance to take a look. Not in a new way of being, in the sense of a new religion that would replace the one that he's in or not, but a new frame through which life could be experienced. And inside of that frame, he just might come to understand the game of life. Why don't we take a look and a listen to a couple of those men right now. I, I think the biggest thing it does is that it just gives you... My wife started to notice all the little things that I had been doing. So for her to point that out to me, for her to put it in writing, and for her to say like, I notice all the little things that you've done, it really resonated with me in a manner of you know, I've always been the home run guy. We all, I think, come in here ha having have done that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Warrior teaches us the concept of, you know, it's not sexy, but just hit singles every day. Mm -hmm. And so I bought into that and I tried it and I did it for months and weeks and weeks. And, you know, so here I am 14 months later yeah. um, starting to reap, you know, the benefits of that. It didn't happen as quickly as I would have liked to, but um, just recently, you know, we celebrated our 15 year anniversary and for her to put that in writing to me saying that she notices all the little things that I do for her and that I do for the kids and that I do contribute uh, meant the world to me. So yeah, it's a huge victory that I celebrate by being here. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Welcome back. For those that are with us right now live, I'll give a few shout-outs here. Josh Frederick, Kevin Mixon, Jason Sneed, what's up, buddy? Thank you very much. William Toadvine, Rosenda Diaz, Chad Jones, uh, and the rest of you who are here on live. Those are some of our newer men that showed up here. So we're going to take some of your questions at the very end. If you got questions on any of these topics, feel free to put them in. I'm going to put my phone down, uh, and we're going to head into this next piece of the equation. So the next thing I started to ask myself though was what is what is the purpose of power? Right? And this this became this became a, an interesting game because it wasn't just about having purpose, it was ultimately about uncovering power. And power itself was an interesting conversation because power taught me that I could be a lot of things. Having a lot of power meant that I had actually the capacity to do two very important things, which is I had the power to destroy 
and also have the power to create. The power itself is needed for both. There are power needed to destroy shit and there's power needed to create shit. Now let's take a look at this inside of the way most of society operates. Most society finds a lot of their notoriety and their significance from destroying. And so the power they search for, they actually acquire through destruction. They criticize people who put themselves out there. They criticize people who attempt to create change inside the marketplace. They criticize politicians. They criticize businessmen. They criticize people online. They criticize videos. They spell check the shit out of people. They criticize their wife. They criticize their children. They criticize their parents. They spend most of their life addicted to finding power through the idea of destruction. But see, what's so crazy about it is that it's temporary. It's a cocaine high. When I find significance, which allows me to feel powerful, when I feel powerful by lopping the head off of another man so that I might feel taller in my stand. Hey, here's the deal. Here's why you're so amazing. Because you're shorter than me. Well, motherfucker, you just cut my head off. I know you feel like you grew, but you didn't grow. You just cut the, cut the competition down. You cut other people down. Cutting other people down, unfortunately, makes people feel powerful. Now, I've done it. You've done it. We've all done it. We've done it in situations that didn't make sense. This is how I lived as a husband. I lived as a husband in my first marriage and my second marriage, confused as fuck about what it was to actually be a man. And so I spent most of my idea acquiring power through the destructive game of criticism. My ex-wife and I criticized, constantly criticized, destroying one another, finding power, which ultimately was the energy and the fuel to go. Going out online, it doesn't take a hero to talk shit about somebody else. That's why somebody, the minute I hear somebody criticizing another person, trying to find power through destruction, I ask them one simple thing. What have you fucking created? Well, Donald Trump this. Motherfucker, you can't even govern your own household. Last time I checked, you spend nine hours on social media. You can't pay your fucking bills. Why don't you shut the fuck up? You don't get to have an opinion about producers when you're a destroyer. You don't get to have an opinion about creators when you don't create shit except for the illusion of power through destruction. See, this is a lie. It's easy. It's fast. It's like masturbation and porn. You can masturbate and look at porn. Nobody's going to stop you from doing this shit. And I'm not even saying it's a problem. What I'm saying is it's a sellout. Masturbation and porn will never be connection and sexual intimacy with your wife. You can go on to porn, you can watch all kinds of crazy shit, you could even get some donkeys up in the mix. And inside of that place, it will never be legit. It will be another fantasy found inside this game of intimacy. Hey, you know what? Pornography, it's my intimacy. It's bullshit. It's not true. It doesn't actually build you up. It doesn't help you become anything. It definitely doesn't point you towards a queen. But inside of it, just like pornography, criticism and destruction have become the new fuel for most people. Listen, I know how I'll get powerful. I won't put myself on the line. I won't put my life on the line. I won't put my name on the line. I won't attempt to try anything new. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stay glued to the game that I've been playing. And I'm going to find power by reaching out and simply criticizing all those who try. Interesting, at least here in the United States of America, that we were built on a country with the foundational principle of change, the opportunity to create. We had a president for eight years in this country whose entire marketing campaign was change. Shit didn't really change a whole lot this way or that. I'm not saying it's going to change a whole lot with Donald Trump. What I am saying is that humanity as a whole has begun to find power that is weak and a lie and is the power that comes through destruction. That doesn't require you to be tough. There's nothing fucking tough about you talking shit about somebody else. There's nothing tough about you that the only fucking conversation you can have every day is a conversation about why somebody else shouldn't play. Oh, well, here's why that person's stupid. Here's why they fucked up. And look at this stupid shit. Oh, did you hear about Bobby and Sarah's marriage? Motherfucker, what are you doing about yours? It's a problem if you're a marriage in a marriage where the only conversation you have is about other people's relationships. It's a problem if you can't spend time with your wife without other people being around. It's a problem if the only thing you can talk about when you're with your friends is the bullshit that you talk about other people who aren't there. But guess what? I get it. I understand. I do. I do. Because that's a plan that sounds sound to men who are in a sedated state. And systematic sedation is top men. The power comes through destruction. What if the only way you could gain true power was through creation? 
See, if we come back to the purpose of your life, and the purpose of your life is progression, there is no progression through destruction of other people. There is no progression through the destruction and competitive nature of comparing you to another person. There is no growth in this. You cannot get taller by lopping the head off the man next to you. This shit does not work. It's a temporary fix. Just like going to the porn, typing in the old you porn, tube porn tub, wherever the fuck you go, whipping it out and jerking off. This does not actually progress you. It's a temporary high, it's a temporary release, just like going online and talking shit on social media, being anonymous in your game. Oh, fuck these guys. That's why it's all hilarious. I love watching the videos where they'll be having somebody they do on a live talk show is talking shit about a fighter or an athlete or something of that nature. They'll have that fighter or that athlete hiding behind some wall, and they'll be interviewing, what do you think about so-and-so? And some guy will be talking all tough. Oh, well, this guy, he's fuck piece of shit, and da-da-da, and guess who walks up? the man they're talking shit about. What's so funny to watch every single time is the following. They go from tough, talking shit, criticizing, power and destruction, then the creator shows up. Then the creator shows up. And all of a sudden the destroyer realizes that he's operating off of the fumes that come off the wake of creation. And when a creator's in the room in conflict with destroyers, creators dominate the day. But the problem is most of us have learned to play a different way. You were taught that creation comes through criticism. It doesn't. You were taught that creation and the power of purpose of power comes through destroying other people. What if, what if the power, what if the power that you and I were searching for, what if the power that would set us free, what if the purpose of power was to create? What if you and I were here to test? To test, to progress, to create, to try, to consider, to ask questions, to challenge the status quo inside our own minds. See, Wake Up Warrior wasn't built because I wanted to make a point. Wake Up Warrior was built because my life was not working. My life was burning to the ground. And so here comes a little caveat to this conversation of destruction. See, there is a form of destruction in which there is power. True power. And it's when a man has the courage to look in the mirror, put his hands on the sink, and look deep in his own eyes and realize the life he has been living has been a lie. And that the only path to power is to destroy the life that he currently loathes. That the only way to progress is to let go. Now that destruction that destruction, that is power. Because that sets a space and clears a space for man to actually create a life that he could desire. This is what we stand for at Wake Up Warrior, is allowing and guiding men through a specific curriculum and doctrine, through a belief system and a game and a system that we have built that allows men to no longer play alone but also to have a roadmap that lets them see the elements inside their life that must be destroyed and helps them see that there is no power found in destruction of another, that the only power that can truly come inside of progression is to create with your brothers. And so Warrior Book became the solution. Warrior Book became the access point. Warrior Book became the ultimate insight that allows a man not information, but information into an experience of immersion over 60 days with 99 other men. And if you are not currently on the list to get yourself in, get yourself on over to warriorbook.com. For now, let's hear from another one of our men. Space to like really sit down and create, like what you want, like for me moving forward in 2017. So it's, it's basically like the, the map or the blueprint for 2017 and that's like really why I keep coming back. And then, I mean obviously like the brotherhood, um, you know, competing, like all that stuff is, is stuff I love to do, but um, like I love to do the competition, I love to sit down and like have space to where I can actually sit down and create like what I want moving forward. Um, but just the way that this is set up inside the brotherhood, it, it, it opens up um, like a different level of thinking that like I can't get at home. Mm. 
So, you know, and it's hard to explain. Um, and luckily, like, my wife's supportive of it. But, yeah, like, it is, it's not easy being gone. Um, but at the end of the day, like, hey, this helps me get clear on what I want moving forward. So welcome back, my friends. Welcome back here. Uh, we are continuing this conversation. Wake up, wake up, wake up. This is ultimately what we stand for. But see, waking up is an interesting game because waking up allows a man to actually access power. But inside of that power comes a lot of confusion, that confusion of destruction versus creation. And so the purpose of power is ultimately to create. And the purpose of your life isn't to be perfect, but to progress. And so if the purpose of my life is to progress and the purpose of power is to create, then my progression comes through my creation. And my creation triggers my progression. But when I begin to elude, delude myself to believe that the purpose of my life is perfection, ultimately what I will become is nothing more than a man who searches for power through destruction. Because when the game is perfection, I will find myself constantly critiquing the shit out of those around me, believing that inside that critique I will have found me. But inside that place I will not have found anything but what? The lie that sits at the corner of this game, which is the lie of playing alone, and the gain comes from destroying another man's name. So what is the purpose of production then? So we have this idea of power, we have this idea of purpose, but what is production? See, power linked up to production is ultimately the action of power. Just to have power in of itself doesn't do much. If the purpose of power is to create, well that creation manifests itself in the life that we live here in school called Earth, this ball of mud called Earth, this boot camp school. This game is here is done through production which is actually putting power into action to produce a result. The contract between these two then is this game of expansion or contraction. When you look around at your life right now, across body being balanced in business, what we see are a couple of things. Your body is currently in the state it's in because of the power and the level of production that you have laid into the body domain. If your body is working and it's functional and it's fit and it gives you fire and fuel and excitement and desire to live every single day, both sexually, emotionally, spiritually, a weapon that allows you to live the warrior's way, when you have put power into production with your body, the result itself is prosperity. The abundant experience of your body is a body that works, that supports you, that's weaponized, that supports you to live day to day. <clears throat> this past weekend, my daughter got very excited about her new bike. I sat on a skateboard, I was very excited about my new skateboard, and literally for 11 hours, 11 hours between Saturday and Sunday, we rode bikes with her and her friends while I skateboarded along. For 11 hours, we figured anywhere between two and a half to three miles per hour. This means this weekend, I literally skateboarded almost 30 miles, 30 fucking miles. Did my body support me? Yes. And yet the problem is most men, most men's production inside the body and most men's production inside of life is limited by their physical bodies. We were hanging out with guys who were 50, 55, trying to give me all these bullshit stories. Well, you know, it's because I'm 50, 55. I was like, well, how much you been working out? I haven't been working out. Well, dude, that's on you. I was like, don't tell me how I'm going to be a 50 because when I was 30, people were telling me how I was going to be a 40. And I've shattered all those fucking stories too. See, because I don't play like you. I play like me. And inside of me, what I understand is my power is channeled into my production, which is the doing of shit. My power is the potential of doing shit. My production is the doing of shit. My power is the potential. My production is the actual action. The doing necessary. Same thing goes inside of my being and my spirituality. Contraction is when somebody asks you a hard question and then you feel threatened. And inside that threatened state of experiencing a question that's challenging for you, inside of that you have contraction. You have contraction and that contraction defaults to destruction. We begin then attempting to destroy other people whose opinions are different than ours. We say, well, listen, that's not how God is. That's not how God operates. That's not how life is. That's not what's going to happen when we die. And all of a sudden inside of it, our own contraction comes about because our production is limited the minute somebody challenges us with a question that is different than what we anticipated. And then watch the default. I go from contraction to what? To destruction. And then that destruction links me up to this story of perfection. 
So my story of perfection drives me to find power through destruction. That destruction is ultimately a game of contraction. I hope you're starting to see the fucking connection here. My contraction, my destruction, my perfection. Or a different way. My progression inside of my creation leads to my expansion. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's come back and look at this again. My perfection story marries me up to a deliberate game in which I'm constantly destroying and criticizing. That criticism and that destruction energy leads me to a game of contraction in which I try to keep my life the same. No, no, no. Don't talk to me about anything new. I already know the game. This is exactly how this shit works out. I'm going to shame you, blame you, make you feel guilty for even challenging the way that I live. Here is the way it is. But what if that's not the way it is? What if the purpose of your life wasn't perfection? What if the purpose of your life was progression? That progression led to deeper levels of creation because you weren't trying to get it right. You were just trying to grow. And inside of that creation, what you found was through your production, you expanded. So a lot of people look back and they say, well, dude, does this warrior's way work? Is this shit that you're talking about, does it work? I said, well, listen, I would never ask you to do anything I have not done, so why don't you go back online and look at shit from me five years ago? Why don't you go look at shit from me ten years ago? And why don't you tell me if what you see is expansion or contraction? The crazy part was, is during my darkest days, when I was asking these questions of myself, when I was challenging my religious belief systems, my economic belief systems, my marriage belief systems, my parenting belief systems, my physicality belief systems, I challenged everything. I let go that I had the right way to do it. All I knew was the way I was doing it was not working. There had to be a different way that would work. And so I hunted it down and I searched it down. And along that place, I, what I found was a life that did work. A life that worked for me. A life that worked for me and my wife. A life that took my marriage and my family to a place that I did not even know was possible. A place I'd heard about, but I didn't know anybody who was actually about it. I knew a lot of people who knew scripture, and I knew a lot of people who could quote me the right things. I knew a lot of people who were very smart, intelligent beings. I knew a lot of men who were one, maybe two dimensional men preaching to me about the way to pull this off. But at the end of the day, I didn't know any man who had actually begun to live the plan called true expansion, which is waking up every single day and not being okay with how they played yesterday, knowing that today is a new day, and inside of today, my purpose is to grow. My purpose is expansion. The purpose of my production is expansion. So do you need a new car? Do you need a new house? Do you need to buy new shit? Nope. You don't need those things. You might think you need them. But regardless of across the level of where you acquire, the one thing you'll find is inside of that desire is a fire, and that fire is a game of expansion. And the only way for you to expand is to produce. The only way to produce is to have the courage to create. And the only way I've found to have the courage to create is realize that no matter how much you try to debate it, the purpose of your life is not perfection, it's progression. And so inside of this production game, we found a game of expansion. Expansion became the game. How do I expand? What is my plan? How do I expand? What is my plan? Contra our contraction taking me back to where I came from before. Expansion became the new found door. And so now thousands of men just like you and me have come to play this new possibility. And we've begun to search around our own humanity to see if we could possibly see something new inside of you and me. How do I actually live a life that works? Does this shit of Wake Up Warrior work? Well, brother, guess what? The only way you could possibly know whether the shit I share with you on this show actually could make you go is to give it a try. Isn't that the craziest shit? You don't have to trust anything I say. Fuck, you probably just found me the first time on the internet. I wouldn't trust me either. But what I can tell you is We've created enough inside of this to give you a shot. And this is why, ultimately, we built the Warrior Book. And why we built the Warrior Book Brotherhood, a network of men from 17 different countries, men who are committed to living this new possibility, who don't want to do it alone. And with that being said, you know what time it is. It's time for us to hear from another one of those men and exactly how this doctrine and this belief system and this game 
really hit home for them. I wouldn't um, have rebuilt or set myself up in a position to be able to sacrifice time away from my family and my business and leave for four or five days without it. Um, six months ago, I'd cancel a vacation if I didn't feel I had my office dialed in perfectly or if I didn't have my calendar for court appearances and hearings perfect. And today I just got up, closed the door, figured if it was burnt down when I got back, I'll rebuild the fucker. So it, with that, I, I just wouldn't be in a position to be able to make those sacrifices emotionally, physically, um, mostly emotionally with, with being able to disconnect from all of those things that aren't as important to me anymore as my family is. I wouldn't um, have rebuilt or... There will be thousands of you who will see this on the replay. So uh, we've got uh, Ty. Ty Sherwood, what is this all about? First time here. Great question, Ty. Well, there's a whole bunch of content here on the fan page that might engage you and help you understand a little bit more about who we are here at Wake Up Warrior, why we as a group of men came together in the hundreds and thousands of men from around the globe to unify around this belief system we call the Warrior's Way, ultimately answering a simple question called, what does it mean to be the man? Scott Kochev, thanks, buddy. Chris Decker, Tony Pope, yes, man, this content's hitting home. Ty Sherwood, we already got you. Shane Calcutt. Warrybook.com, thanks for putting that in there. All right, gentlemen, so we're going we're gonna to keep rolling through here. Uh, the fun part is, is for those who are live, we're going to do a Q&A session uh, at the end of this today. And um, <clears throat> one of the things I can promise you in the way that we play and how we do what we do here is that we, do, we don't actually look for, um, we don't actually look for popularity. There's a lot of people trying to get popular inside of the way they do social media. Uh, that's never really been our goal. Our goal wasn't to become popular. Our goal was to be powerful. And inside of that, one thing as I've found is that it doesn't mean how many people are involved in a thing so much as it does the type of people that are involved in the thing. There's plenty of groups that you've been part of where you hang out with men, and guess what? There's a bunch of them there, but the truth is there's hardly one man in the entire fucking room, even though there's 200 guys there. Yeah, there's a lot of penises and testicles in the room, not a lot of men. Being able to find that place ultimately comes down to being able to acknowledge our final question for today, which is what is the purpose of profit? So we've talked about the purpose of power. We've talked about the purpose of production. Now we're saying, well, okay, well, what is the purpose of profit? And profit ultimately being the end result that would tell us, hey, some shit is working. In business, very simple. Profit is the money available to us, both in a gross level, which is gross revenue or gross profits for the business, net revenue for the business, and then for a business owner or an entrepreneur, the king cash or the money that he actually takes home. For you, if you're an entrepreneur working inside another organization, what it ultimately gives you is what? The ability to get paid more for the value that you create. Profit is what you make. Profit is what we take. There's profitability in marriage. There's profitability in your body. There's profitability in your spirituality. There's profitability in the way that you deal on a day-to-day -day basis with your bank accounts. But this profitability ultimately leads us into looking at two things. Inspiration versus motivation. We'll start down here in motivation. See, motivation is what drives people when they're in scarcity. Most people in scarcity or lack are very motivated very motivated by this outside reality. The outside reality says, I want to produce more profits in my life, which means I need bigger fucking results because my shit is not working right now. My body is not working and highly motivated they are to get their wife, life and their body to a place it is working. Then you got people inside of relationships they are like, my marriage is not working. And from that place, they will deeply be motivated, listening to podcasts, watching shows like this, and like, yes! And off they go on the motivation train to accomplish a game that is good. They go from shitty to good. And you see people do this inside the relationship with their kids. They'll fight and hustle really hard with their children, being super motivated by some podcast they listen to about being a great dad. And they'll do the great dad thing until they get to what? Being good, being a good dad. 
And then at good, most people stop because motivation burns only to good. It doesn't go to great. It's impossible. You can't be motivated to go to greatness. Motivation doesn't come from this game of profitability looking for goodness. Goodness itself is the desired outcome of 99.9% .9 of the planet. I just want things to be good. I don't want them to be shitty. Well, how's your business? Well, it's really good. How do you know it's really good? Well, it's a lot better than when it was shitty. Right now, it's really good. Okay, good. So what's next? Oh, no, you know, we're good now. We're going to settle in, retire. We're going to find us some retirement plans. We can tuck the money away. We're going to sit on a beach and drink some margaritas, be fat and get diabetes and fucking die. That sounds like a great fucking plan. Welcome to retirement. Hey, my entire desire in life is what? To get to good. This is what you've been sold. You've been sold under the perfection plan that the perfection plan tells you that your life is to become good and then when it's good that it won't be great until you die. And then when you die, greatness somehow will just show up. Well, hey, guess what? You died. Here's some greatness for you. And inside that place day to day, the problem that you find is the following and that is that motivation doesn't last. You can watch this show every single week. You can participate inside the games with every single week, but motivation doesn't actually last. The home I'm moving into right now, the cars I drive, the family that I, that I have, the sexual intimacy that I desire with my wife, it's not because my life is not good. My hell, shit, my life's fucking great, but that's not enough. And some people say, well, you're selfish, Garrett. He's egotistical, right? You're a fucking money hoarder. You're a guy that's just searching for more shit. It's like, I'm not looking for more shit. I'm looking to become more. You know, it's fun. We were sitting there one day looking at some yachts. We were down in the harbor where we live. And we had some friends that had come in from out of town to be able to spend some time with us. And we were sitting there looking at it. And the comment by one of the women asked was this. I mean, who actually needs something like that? I mean, what do you even need for it? I mean, it's so ridiculous that you would even buy a yacht like that. You know how many other people you could help out with that money? My wife looked at her and said, that's interesting. You know what I think when I see that? Who would I have to become and who would we have to become to have a yacht that we could take our friends out on? Isn't that interesting? See, it's not about having shit. It's about expanding to become a man who could. It's really easy to say, well, you know, I don't give a shit about money when you don't have any. It's really easy to say, well, money doesn't drive me when you can barely pay your fucking bills. It's really easy to say, well, here's what I would do if I was president of the United States, but you're not even fucking president of the PTA. You don't even fucking help out of your kid's soccer team. Oh, but here's what I would do if I was president of the United States. You're a pussy. What are you fucking talking about? You don't know the first goddamn thing about leading. You can barely lead your family. You can barely lead yourself. Look in the mirror at your body. You can barely lead your own fucking body. And so most men run around hunting for motivation. Give me some purpose in my life. I'm motivated to get my life from shitty to good. And you know what? I commend you if you have. I'm not against you. I'm not against you going to good. I'm not. And the rules of perfection tell you that getting to good is good enough. Because they actually think that the horizon is the destination. But when you surrender to the reality that your life is possibly not about perfection, but about progression... That maybe possibly your life was not about destruction, but about creation. That it wasn't about contraction, but about expansion. Then you also come to realize that the ultimate purpose of life is not to be driven by motivation, but to be guided by inspiration. And so the purpose of profit for me is inspiration. There are targets that open up in this ball of mud, this school called Earth. Targets, physical targets, business targets, marriage targets. In the beginning for me with my wife, it was frequency of sex and it was quality of sex. Then it was the deep connection and I said, I want to get to a place in which I don't actually think about how much sex I'm having. I just know I'm in a relationship where my wife and I have deep respect for each other, deep sexual connection, deep emotional connection, deep spiritual connection, and I want it to be normal. But that wasn't the case because I was begging for fucking hand jobs, couldn't even pay the fucking bills back in 2009. So listen, I get it. I get it. And in the beginning, these shows might be motivation for you. But motivation won't be enough. It won't be enough. Motivation fades by tomorrow. <clears throat> motivation is Red Bull or cocaine, a mixture of the two. Motivation is a temporary high in which you look outside of yourself for the drive to fly. You will never fly with motivation. Motivation doesn't jump per somebody off a cliff. 
Motivation doesn't get people to do shit long term. Motivation gets people to hype up the game and do something really intense for two days and then quit. Motivation teaches a man that there's an easy button and a hack to life. There is no fucking hack to life, my friends. There's having clear blueprints and then there's doing the work. So then what Paul's a man inside of this brotherhood to move past motivation to inspiration, to not be okay with good, but to pursue and hunt down the inevitable expanding target of greatness? Well, it's the willingness to be inspired. It's a willingness to let a voice inside of them guide them to find deeper terrains, higher peaks, and new possibilities. At 40 years of age, almost 41, my life has never been more fun. And day to day, I don't really know where we're going day to day in the sense of having some big fucking 20-year plan. What I do know is I wake up today and the purpose of my life is progression. I know I wake up today and the purpose of my life is creation. I know I wake up today and the purpose of my life is expansion. <clears throat> the gaining more power through the tools we call core four. Gaining more clarity on the production using tools we call the keys in the game. And ultimately gaining more productivity and profit inside of the targets and challenges of living the challenge-based lifestyle we teach inside this brotherhood have allowed me to live a game that most never knew I could. Shit, the house we're moving into, the place we live in, the experience that we're operating in at this time in my life. Most of the respect the people from my past give me was a simple fact that they fucking gave up on me in the dark. And that's okay. Because I almost gave up on me in the dark too. So, I'm not pissed about it. I understand. And so now when I take a stand and men from my past come around and say, how did you do this, this warrior's way? I said, I chose today that it was time to play. And brothers, that's my invitation to you also. My invitation to you also is to review the game that we covered today. This idea of purpose, power, production, and profit. Purpose, power, production, and profit. And that ultimately these four Ps lead us to one destiny. And here inside this brotherhood at Wake Up Warrior, that destiny is found at Warrior Book. Dot com. So here we go. You know what's coming at you. Another part of the show. Hoping that today we can get just one more man to take a stand and join us in a movement and a brotherhood that's going to blank in the world. Why is it worth it? Um, I mean, the pen and paper answer is that every time I leave here, shit explodes in a good way. Like I come back with some huge strategy some massive you know, epiphany of, uh, of where I can improve in my relationships. And, uh, and it's actually hilarious. From the first Warrior event to this one, my wife has like been first, she started out like, have fun in Laguna Beach with your boy party. <laughs> and now she's like, you go and you come back. And I don't even fucking care because it works. I love it. I swear to God, it's hilarious. But, um, but I love it. I mean, the brotherhood, the guys, the friendships. I mean, one year ago is when I met everyone else outside of the Warrior Pod. Yeah. And for me, it's about that group and just challenging myself, the nervousness of what's to come in the next couple of days, <laughs> which is exciting. All of that. You don't get that anywhere else. Well, hello. Well, hello there. Well, hello there. As you can tell, we, uh, we have no problem pitching Warrior Book. Nope. Zero. Zero problem. Zero problem pitching it because I know what it is. See, Warrior Book is not just access to doctrine. Uh, Warrior Book is a ticket into a game for 60 days. A 21-day immersion process during which every single day a man with 99 other men is guided through the doors and through the gauntlet of understanding the doctrine of the warrior's way. Ultimately, the foundational piece we call the code. Then we ship out the book, and before that, they have access to the apps and the games. Then we roll them in for 39 days into the Brotherhood, and inside that experience, experience a deep immersion with over five, 600 other men from all over the globe who connect and talk every single week. Today on our Brotherhood Live, our trainings, we talk about sex, money, business, marketing, parenting, 
across the board and inside our networks every single day. So it's more than doctrine, it's more than a book, it's an access point, and it's not a written textbook, it's a video book that allows for you to experience power and profound understanding of yourself and inside of that find power, productivity, and purpose and profit like you've never found before. So we're going to do a few, uh, a few comments here uh, with some of you guys who are live on. I'm going to go down and give a, a little rundown and shout out to all of our, our guys who are still with us, to Chris Decker, to Tony Pope, to Ty Sherwood, to Shane Calcutt, Todd Gaster, Cod Chad Collier, Brian Sherman. Uh, Brian Sherman said something interesting. He said, this is my transition year from working at a job to working for myself. I'm working a lot of hours. How do I work in harmony with my work, my business, my family? It seems like there's not enough time. I know I'm not, I'm not spending enough time with my kids and wife. So what I will tell you is, um, Brian, is that the first shift that has to happen is that there's not a perfect way for every man to play inside of their family while building businesses. Um, what I can also say, too, is that time is never the answer. Never the answer, right? Like, I run, uh, I run hard as fuck, man, and I run hard as fuck with my family, too. But it's not about how much time. During the week, Monday through Friday, with my kids, I take my kids to school in the morning, I spend a couple hours with my kids at night. When I'm with my children, I'm with my children. Like, I'm all in it with my children. It's focused, it's present, it's intense, it's with my kids. On a weekend, I'm the dad. I got voted this weekend in our neighborhood. I didn't know this. We were all with all the kids at the pool, and several of the dads said, hey, we just want to let you know you were uh, crowned the champion of the neighborhood. I was like, really? They're like, yep, you were voted number one dad. And I was like, really? They're like, yep, number one dad. And I was like, who voted on it? And all the little girls that play with my daughters all raised their hands. I was like, okay. Well, guess what? I don't spend more time with those kids than some of their fathers do. But when I'm with the kids, I'm fucking all in. So your game is not about, particularly as an entrepreneur launching your own thing, you're going to grind. You might work 12 hours a day. Sleep less, bro. Like, I don't want to tell you. Like, you're going to sacrifice from something. It doesn't mean you need more time, but it does mean that you're going to have to shut it down when you go with your kids. You can find a way to do that. That's one of the beautiful things about being part of the internal network in the worry book, being with us the brotherhood, is that you're surrounded with shitloads of men who aren't transitioning entrepreneurs. They are, they've been entrepreneurs for a long time. And we all fucked it up. My first, my marriage was ending because I couldn't figure that balance came out. Couldn't figure out how to do it. And I lived also in this trap of time, that the answer was to give more time. If I just had more time, if I just invested more time in my kids. Not realizing that there are plenty of people who invest no time in their kids, but they're around their kids all the time. They're on their phones, messaging on Facebook, looking at fucking Netflix, putting their kids in front of iPads. It's not time. So I'm not after time, I'm after connection. And when that happens, your kids are amazing. You can connect with the kids for 10 minutes in the morning and it fills them up all day. You could spend a whole day with the kids and run around treating them like Disneyland dad and never once have the kids feel connected. They might feel entertained, but they're not going to feel connected. So great point, buddy. Uh, great point and great question. Um, Shane said, Brian, you create the time, brother. Make time with your family a priority by setting boundaries and making... Can't see what the rest of that comment is. Shane Carica, how is it possible that you are not currently in Warrior Book? You've been following us. You've been following us for such a long ass time, dude. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck you're not inside worry book. This was the same thing I was saying to Orin, who now is our orist, came in, who is now inside worry book 500, who just barely got started with us, who also has been following. There are some of you guys that watch this. Some of you live. We're going to push this out. We'll share this out on the networks. Thousands of you will watch this on demand. And here's what I'm asking you. Like, you keep sitting on the sideline and watching. Like, you've been watching. Some of you guys have been watching for fucking years. You realize that sitting in the stand for years will never make you a player. Maybe it's time to quit screwing around. Maybe it's time to actually step in. I'd invite you to. I'd invite you to. This is what's so crazy. We made the investment in Worry Book like nothing. Some people are like, well, it's $1,000. That's not nothing. I was like, I get it. It's nothing. Nothing. You will find nothing that will compete with what we do. Nothing. You will find no program that will give you the depth of the doctrine, the support and association, the coaching and accountability, 
and the opportunity to give yourself a fucking shot for the price anywhere. So give yourself a shot, man. It's never going to be a good time. Never going to be a good time. There's only going to be the lost time from continuing to think there is a good time. Let's look at a couple more content. Um, Shane, there's no let's talk. There's, a, there's no interviews for $1,000 investments, bro. Like, I have clients that invest $250,000 a year with me right now. Like, you already know at this point. You know exactly what you need to do. There's no talking. There's just going to warriorbook.com and putting your email in and then getting yourself inside of Warriorbook 600 that releases in three and a half weeks and make sure you have $1,000 to put in place so you can do it. There we go. We just talked. Congratulations. You have permission to come in. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you. Uh, let's look at something else. Chad Jones. Garrett, appreciate the wake-up call from your direct approach. You're welcome, buddy. And uh, it looks like everybody else is just like some comments that aren't really questions. So, gentlemen, I appreciate you tons. And uh, we're going to wrap up this show. We've got, uh, we've got a lot of shit to cover today inside of the Brotherhood. We've got Brotherhood Live today and a bunch of other trainings and some things that we've got to get into. So we're going to wrap up today's TV show. Thanks so much for being here. This is Wake Up Warrior TV. This is episode number 10. My name is Garrett J. White. I am the founder of Wake Up Warrior and the host of Wake Up Warrior TV, the weekly wake up here on Facebook and on YouTube. Thanks so much for being here. And uh, we'll end off today with a special little message. The package I've been waiting for. I'm gonna walk to my desk here and unpack them. Warrior book. It looks very, very nice. There we go. To me, what, what the warrior book is, it's, it's, it's a masterstroke. It's a work of art. It's it's a, it's a gift of life, really. It's a, it's a gift for you to be able to create the life that you want in full control, not reliant on anybody else, but reliant on the only person that matters, and that's you. So for anybody who's thinking about joining Warrior, I would say, what the hell are you waiting for? This is your opportunity to create your ideal life. This is an opportunity to seriously send your life off in a whole new trajectory. So if you're somebody who knows there's more out there for you, who knows that you're here to make a difference, then the science that sits inside of this book is going to significantly enhance your chances of doing just that. Spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars joining every fucking business group every men's group, trying to find something this organized, this functional, with guys this quality you're gonna open up and share, with this level of teaching and depth, in an organized format that fucking anybody could follow. I found it here.